November is almost over and I completely forgot that it's been a year since I started the printed in place RC car project. This is the first printed in place RC car in the world. I printed it on November 18th of 2020 and populated it with electronics on the 21st. You could argue that it's, you know, the a true printed in place RC car would have electronics embedded in it, but that sounds more like a, a future me project. Anyway, this is that car. I wanted to show you it and how much has changed since. And here is, here are my MVPs. These are my best and favorite cars of the past year that uh, were key in the improvement of my chassis and bringing it where it is today. And here are the ones that are not so much MVPs, but well, still pretty helpful. At least these are the ones that survived at least. I'm pretty sure I printed anywhere between 100 and 200 of these cars, and now that I say it out loud, I think I have a problem. Before I even got to this point, I had to learn how to make a battery-operated, printed-in-place toy car. So that's what I did the summer of 2020. And this here is Genesis. This is the first printed-in-place, motor-battery-operated toy car. This is the first one, and it slowly developed into this one, which ended up being the Pip Racer, which is available on Thingiverse. My original goal for this project was not a printed in place RC car, but rather a printed in place mini four wheel drive. And that's what this is. As the name states, this is a four wheel drive car. And no, it's not remote controlled, but operates more similarly to a slot car. After this project was completed, I knew I wanted to make a printed in place RC car. So I started developing a steering system, and that's when I created this thing. After I successfully printed the steering system, I was feeling too burnt out to start a new chassis from scratch. So instead, I picked up the pit bracer and merged this file on top, and as a result, the Gamma was born. Both of these are available on Thingiverse and Colts, and I did a video on how to set this one up a little while back. Let's move on. This is what a printed in place car looked like in 2020. And this is what it looks like in 2021. And then of course for 2022, I'll work on that embedded electronics thing and oh, let's make it a hover car while we're at it. Let's start the comparison with the demo car. This is the one that will be available on uh, Thingiverse and that you might've seen on the Facebook group and it will always be free. I printed in the same exact filament for a better comparison. The first thing you might notice is the size. This was designed to be 132 scale. This is 128. I started with 132 scale because, well, my first and foremost hobby is Tamiya Mini 4 wheel drive and they're 132 scale. I upgraded it to 128, both because I wanted more room for the electronics, more stability, and just because uh, that's the general size that you want for mini RC racing. I'm still gonna offer the car in 132 scale because I want to. You'll also notice that uh, this one had bicycle tires. This one has regular tires. Now the bicycle tires, there's a couple of reasons. One of them was that to me a mini four wheel drive don't steer. So there's no point of uh, having wide tires because you wanna reduce lateral uh, friction. Uh, and the other reason is that I was still trying to figure out how everything went together. And in order to make the mechanism work, I needed uh, my gears to be as close to the ground as possible. And that didn't leave, leave much room for my rims and the tires. Eventually I, I figured out how to space the gears higher and uh, that gave me more room for the tires. You will notice that the older car is a little bit holy. And there's two reasons for that. The first reason, is that I wanted to save on material by having less material printed. The second reason is I thought it would print faster. Well, the material savings are really not that much. And as far as printing faster, it didn't. And that's because uh, for each one of these gaps, the nozzle had a stop, move, stop, move, stop, move. And it actually ended up printing uh, slower. Now it prints faster and it's also tougher because, well, there's more material there it's all better you know one thing i really loved about this whole design was the motor mount i had created this little door and hinge and hook which is now missing it was all printed in place 
and you would open it up like that and insert the motor, close it, and the hook would snap on and you were done. So in theory, that was working pretty well, uh, but uh, the hook was a little on the weak side and I would often end up having to just use tape to hold the motor in place. So I decided to get rid of that. The new mount design is much simpler. You simply aim, shove your shaft in the hole, and voila. I had it done this way originally because it didn't really matter where the motor was since this was going to be a four-wheel drive system and I had gears running all the way down here to the other side. The new mount allowed me to place the motor closer to the axle. That means I could get rid of all this extra crap and allowed for more room for the electronics. A good chunk of the development of this car was spent on the steering system alone. I didn't have anything to base it on before it existed, so I created my own design and I stuck with it since. A lot of time went into making it uh, more accurate, more reliable, and more importantly, tougher. And also, you know, better steering angles. Now we're going to talk about the symmetry, or rather, asymmetry. When I started this project, aesthetics were really not that important. I just needed a damn thing to work, so I created it with the support structure as was necessary. Uh, as a matter of fact, you may see this front end and think that that's floating. In reality, there was a support piece here, and that broke off when I drove the car around somewhere. That kind of subconsciously put the idea in my head that would later develop into the removable support structure that I have on these um, newer cars. Depending on your thoughts on it, you may not like support removal in a printed in place design. And I can understand that. So this car is actually runnable with the support structure intact. So you don't have to remove that in order for the car to work. It just looks better if you do. I contemplated for a while if this car should have a removable support piece. But then I thought, well, this car was printed in place and then that piece broke off and it still counted as a printed in place car. So by that logic, a removed support can just be considered a piece that broke off. If in an alternate universe we ever had a printed in place league, we'd probably have a couple of different categories that would define regulation on support structure or other things like origami printed in place, whatever. Next car. This is a suspension car and it ain't free. Sorry, but I did put in the time. The suspension car is the evolution of the demo car. And on top of having the suspension, it also has little improvements such as the front rim designs, which are cleaner, easier to loosen and uh, overall spin better. You can spec this car for either on-road or off-road use. I like using it for off-road because of the pivot point in the back gives it a nice degree of freedom. So let's move on to something a little bit more advanced. This is my experimental version. It's a little bit more track oriented and it includes ideas that are definitely a little bit on the harder side to print. I'm still exploring these ideas, but uh, the most notable thing on it is the differential. I'm experimenting with some different steering systems. I wanted to make uh, more room for the electronics back here, so I needed a way to move the servo forward. And also, I drastically need to improve the steering to compete with the Kyosho Mini Zs. Because this is a more track-oriented design, I decided to opt for a stiffer rear suspension. This one will need a screw and spring to work. I started experimenting with a segmented design. This kind of takes away from the printed in place concept, but I'm running these cars harder and faster all the time. And I'm kind of tired of having to reprint the whole thing. So I think it's easier for me to just reprint whatever breaks and install it on a new frame. Having the suspension being modular also allows me to experiment with different settings for the front and rear. For example, I could install this guy right here and it would look like this. And of course, it also means that you can play around with the aesthetics by choosing what your front, middle, and rear look like. So why aren't these cars available yet? Well, for two reasons. Number one, I have to create a uh, tutorial guide on how to set them up, like I did for the previous one that's currently uploaded on Thingiverse. 
And the fifth reason is that uh, I got uh, really unexpectedly busy in the last part of this year. So this project had to take a back seat. If you join our Facebook group, you can find the link to this one, which is currently being beta tested. I will try to release these two by the year's end. No promises. The track focused version will be something further down the line, but I will include the modular concept along with the suspension car. So there it is, the first printed in place RC car and what one year of development has looked like. I plan to revisit this topic because I'd like to go into detail about what each and every one of these uh, MVPs uh, brought to the table and how they improved the design. And I'd also like to repopulate the original with electronics and a few of the MVPs and see how they stack up to the more modern cars. Um, so that's it. Get out of here.